Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Garrett Smith of NutritionRestored.com and I'm going to be doing my first seminar coming up here very soon called Hair Mineral Analysis, Demystifying the Greatest Tool in Clinical Nutrition and I wanted to tell you what we were going to be going over in this seminar. So who can take this webinar? Practitioners can take it, that's the main audience because we're trying to teach you how to help people and there are lots of people out there who are non-practitioners who if they can get a hold of their own hair test they'd love to do the analysis on their own and hey I'm a believer in medical freedom and so if you get the knowledge and you want to do it on yourself then more power to you and also anyone who has realized or thought that hair mineral analysis has amazing potential but it just hasn't been figured out well enough yet that was me for about 10 years. I did some of these hair tests in medical school and I thought it was great. I just didn't know why I was doing things and I didn't see all the results that I wanted so I, 10 years later, decided to try to figure all this stuff out myself and I uh, feel like I got a pretty good handle on it in the last five years. What will the webinar be covering? It will be covering the real value of hair mineral analysis and the limitations of hair mineral analysis. What people need to know is that every test has its usefulness and value and its limitations. No test can tell you everything or we would have already figured that out, right? And then we need to know what the hair mineral analysis is actually telling us, what it can tell us, and what it simply cannot tell us. When you have something high, what does it mean? What can't it mean? What could it mean? So that's what we're going over there. And then we'll go over the things we're going to go over in reading a hair mineral analysis as part of this webinar. We're going to go over all the ways that calcium can skyrocket because that's a big thing that a lot of people are dealing with. We're going to go over a big specialty of mine which is recognizing the fat stored vitamin D supplement patterns and cycles. Yes, you can store vitamin D in your fat tissues and yes, it can mess you up for a very long time after you stop taking it. We're going to go over how to fix high calcium and low potassium, a very, very common pattern nowadays. We're going to go over low calcium, which comes up less often, and how to figure out how to bring it up for different people because different people need different approaches. We're going to go over copper toxicity, when, when it's actually really there. We're going to go over copper deficiency, which is more common and often there, and how to spot both using a hair analysis. And then we're going to go over what toxic elements need addressing, which ones are important and you need to kind of go after them, and which ones are not so important and which ones take care of themselves so you can kind of work on other things. More on topics we'll go over in reading hair mineral analysis. This is not an exhaustive list of all the things we're going to go over. We're going to go over how to spot contamination patterns, kind of another specialty of mine. We're going to go over the sources of those contamination. We're going to go over how to have people prep their hair samples because my process is a bit more intense than the lab suggests, so we avoid contamination as much as possible. We're going to go over why hair, hair mineral levels of iron are next to useless and the tests that you would need to get instead. Where did all the boron go? A lot of practitioners these days are noticing that boron is just non-existent on their hair analysis and there's a very good reason why and how to bring it back up and how to wait until it comes back up. We're going to go over how to use the additional elements on the uh, lab that I use, which is the extra elements down at the bottom, to give a bigger picture of what's happening in the whole process. Then we're going to go over addressing what you found because having the information is one thing, but then we have to address it. I'm going to help people stop obsessing over hair mineral ratios because when we actually fix the levels, the ratios fix themselves. We're going to go over how to work with hair tests from both adults and children. We're going to move way beyond the standard lab suggested supplement recommendations. Those are not very, not always very helpful and sometimes even unhelpful. We're going to learn the why of using each particular nutrient. This is what I did with hair mineral analysis. I saw what they were doing, I reverse engineered what the hair test said and what all the supplements were intended to do and then I kind of reworked it into my own approach using what I knew, what was in the research and what made sense and what people did well with, what they tolerated well. We're going to go over spotting detox patterns because detox, with my approach, the detox just happens. We don't have to force detoxes. We don't have to do cleanses. We don't have to do coffee enemas. We don't have to force it. 
the body does it on its own, but we need, and then when it does happen, you want to know how to recognize it so you can then know what to do. Uh, on, moving on, we're going to retracing, which is a real phenomenon, how to recognize it, what to do about it, and what not, what you don't have to do. Uh, the implications of an initial test versus retest, because they're very different things. Roadblocks to improvement, I call them roadblocks, things that will block people's progress that the hair mineral analysis just can't show. An example would be like someone in a toxic house full of mold. That will ruin people's health, and that is not going to show up on the hair test, and they will just feel worse no matter what they do. So we need to figure that out if we're having that. How to integrate hair mineral analysis with other testing approaches. I would hate for people to think that hair mineral testing is the only thing I use because I'm actually quite experienced in other approaches that I did much before this. I've simply come to find that hair mineral analysis is my go-to first test to try to start helping people. And the nice thing about it is it's one of the most cost-effective tests in my opinion. Things this webinar is not. This is not a rehash of anyone else's approach to hair mineral analysis. This is this is my stuff, this is new. I learned from people, including Rick Malter. I'm familiar with Dr. Wilson's stuff. I don't use Dr. Wilson's stuff. I don't agree with a lot of it. This is my stuff. I'm not going to spend time in this webinar lecturing about why hair mineral analysis is useful or valuable. I'm going to assume that people are coming to this webinar knowing that it's useful, knowing that it's valuable, they just don't know how to use it yet, or maybe they've seen me using it and talking about it and they want to learn what I'm doing. That's what we're going to do. We're not going to waste time saying, you know, defending it. <clears throat> we're not going to go over some of those, you know, super boring discussions of pathways and theories and things that we don't know are happening, but we're guessing. Well, we'll go over some. I mean, sometimes you kind of got to go into that area, but we're not going to go into all the, what I find that really killed it for me in a lot of seminars I went to was when they just spend hours droning on about pathways and I'm kind of just like just tell me what to do I want to help people I got too many things on my mind these days to worry about knowing every little pathway here so that's that's the way I teach that's what I like to hear that's what I like to, to share with people we're not going to do the just take what the lab says to because the lab has the super secret formula and they're going to be the ones telling you the magical combination for you when the lab doesn't know anything about a person's case other than the hair test. So those are the big things that we're going to be covering in this webinar. The webinar costs and the dates and times are going to be in the blog post that goes along with this video. Um, they'll also be at my website nutritionrestored.com. The webinar itself is going to be six three-hour sessions one time a week. So that's, I, th I find that's the best way to give the information, give people time to kind of absorb it, figure out their questions so we can get a good back and forth going and people figure out what they know and what they don't know and what they need. If you have any questions about the webinar or if you want to sign up, feel free to contact my office with questions at, at admin at nutritionrestored.com. You'll be talking to Julie through that email address. And then keep an eye out for my new upcoming podcast where we discuss all things health. Eric, Dr. Eric Lewis and I of uh, hemochromatosishelp.com. It's called Cafe Gray. We'll go over why it's called that in the first episode. And hope to see some of you guys at the webinar and hope to hear from you guys soon. Thanks.